Ooh, welcome everybody to the Board and Scale podcast. And today uh, we are back to talk about some more board game stuff like we always do. Um, we have a few topics today. Also, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, whatever it is yeah. for you. <clears throat> this is coming out on... Uh, the day after? Yeah. <laughs> what's, I don't know what to call it. What's the opposite of Eve? We talked post. about this. Post. Christmas post. That's kind of dumb. Because pre is the opposite of post. Pre? Yeah. Like workout? Christmas yeah. pre. That's, let's go with workout. Pre-workout. Christmas pre-workout? Okay. Yo. Cool. Honestly, Fuck me then. Like a gingerbread? Is this how we're going to start? Where did we get there from? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so confused. And what are you mad about over there? Christmas post. Yeah, it's I'm not with Christmas you. Post. I'm with you on Christmas post until somebody proposes Find something, something better. better. Nah, after Christmas. All right. <laughs> I, well, that's right. It's Boxing Day, but that's not the same. <gasps> this is coming out on Boxing Day, so happy Boxing Day if you're from down under. <laughs> what? <laughs> Australia. The day after Christmas is Boxing Day. Where everybody down fights under. for the presents? I'm confused. No. It's called Boxing Day. I have no idea because they open boxes. Maybe. I don't know. No. no. It's, it's Boxing Day because that's when you box all your stuff back up and return it to the store oh. <laughs> that you didn't want. Okay. 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 All right. Well, that was three of us hitting a Boxing Day joke. Dwayne, you're the only one left. International humor. In the spot. On the spot. No pressure. Go ahead. Um, Boxing Day. Because <laughs> that was great. they have kangaroos. Awesome. Box. I just Perfect. like to, to point out, according to the Oxford Languages mm, website, Jesus. the uh, opposite of Eve is day after. <laughs> <laughs> okay, doctor. Day after Christmas. <laughs> oh, no. <I> <laughs> Very clever they were with that one. Okay. So the first topic we have today is <laughs> relevant to the holidays for most gamers that... Enjoy spending time with their family. Maybe you travel to go and see uh, your family or just spend the day with, you know, your non-gamer people. And so the topic is, do you, one, do you even try to play games with family that you're spending time with that are not gamers? One. And if yes, how often do you choose the light, easy party games that you know are going to, everyone's going to be fine playing. Or you're like, are you the person that tries to, you know what? I want to bring what I want to play and I'm going to make people into gamers. Okay. Okay. All right. So I, we've done a little bit of both. We have done a little bit of both. So when we travel, it's either we're taking a lot of games or we're taking zero games. There's really no in between for us. Um, so like we took after packs because last, not this most recent packs, but the one before we had dropped our kids up in New York. And so we traveled from New York down to Philly and back up. So after packs, when we had all of our games, we literally played, um, fall of the mountain King on the table in my parents' house. My parents are not gamers at all. Um, my brothers try, um, but they're, I mean, my youngest brother is one of them. Yeah, he tries. He's thirteen, I think. Something or he'll, no, like he's nine. twelve. He'll be thirteen next year. Um, so he's still kind of iffy about it, but he tries and he enjoys them. I think he's the one that wants to the most. Mm hmm. So, but we did bring code names. We did bring. Um, I forgot about that. Yeah. What else did we bring? That one was kind of a, like people liked it. I don't remember. But we played two out of like the ten that we that we brought. We also played genotype there. That was just us though. Yeah, it yeah. was. I like because we pulled it out and everyone was like, "No, that's science. No thanks." <laughs> yeah, but these aren't games that you you brought these in large part because you just come from packs. Yeah, right? they were they were just with us. Yeah, so you didn't like deliberately be like, "Oh, hey, like these are games we should bring with us because to play with them." That's true. I guess we so, like what would you put in your suitcase. We did actually take games we did take a to lot. play at PAX. Not a single one got touched. <laughs> um, but then we had to haul that back, plus all the new games. So that was dumb, and we didn't, we're never doing that again. But anyways, the type of games that we do bring in the suitcase. Code names. <laughs> go ahead, name one. You're taking it to your family on Monday. Where are you going? What are you taking? <laughs> 
No, Masked Men would be too complicated for my my family. Um, Especially because the rules don't make any sense. Okay, okay. Kev. Um, one that uh, one that I just played that I haven't played recently was Corkle. Um, okay, that's a that's a good one. My family likes that one. That's a little abstract game, right? Mm-hmm. Little tiling game, matching up colors and shapes. Um, so that's one. I mean, I I have like a bunch, because like before I was playing with y'all, I was playing with my family mostly. And then friends that are not very, not really gamers, but they're like, yeah, I'll play board games. That they want to hang out. Yeah. So a lot of the games that I were buying were on the lighter side. Um, so I just had, that was all my shelf was. So, yeah. I mean, I could name a bunch. Uh, none off the top of my head, though, <laughs> apparently. I could name a bunch, but none at the same is, time. Is, so Corkle's like your family classic? That's the one like you go to a family outing and they're like or family gathering and they're like, oh, did you bring did you bring that game? Mm-hmm. Pull it out. They don't even remember the name. They just know. Oh, the block, game, <laughs> the block game. See, that's actually funny because my mom does remember a lot of the games that we play, but she will never remember the names of them. So she's like, every time she's like, I forgot to write the name she, down. She's got a nickname. I need to start writing the names down, but she never does. Yeah. It's so just, it's just like it's a. It's then a deduction game in its own self. Like, <laughs> okay, what did the pieces look like? Yeah. How did we play the game? The block game. <laughs> it's a very classic mom move. <laughs> the animal game. <laughs> oh, Thousand boy. For you. <laughs> That's a challenge. I'll get text messages after I leave home if I've played a game, introduced it to my parents, and they'll be like, hey, what was this game? So, yeah. See, my family will be will play a game, and then will have to text me during to let, let me know that they're playing games because... We're those people that play games. So whenever they play them, they have to let us know, oh, we played this game. We play it. They played um, <clears throat> Ultimate Werewolf at um, Thanksgiving and they messaged us and they're like, yeah, they really like the wolf game. And I was like, the how what? Come, yeah. How come you guys never brought this game to us? I've never played werewolf. It's none of them. It's OK. So I was like, mm, what door. the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> so. I do think it's cute when they do that, though, when Mm -hmm. parents... It's adorable. Like, oh, yeah, we're playing a game. Like, all right, cool. Like, they they acknowledge that you like board games, and they're doing something that you like in your space, and they want to share that... Mm -hmm. No, don't talk to me. Unless you're playing Dominant Species, don't talk to me. (laughs) (laughs) I told my mom, I was like, one day, one day, I'm going to open up one of these big games, and you're going to sit there with me, and we're going to go through it, and I don't care if it takes eight hours... We are going to play, I don't know, probably some medium weight game over eight hours. <laughs> you know, I tried that um, in the early days of actually getting games that weren't family or party games. I brought out Dead of Winter with oh me, and my mom, and my dad. And that was the rude awakening of where, okay, I can't just pull anything out and play it. Because, uh, yeah, in the middle of me teaching the rules, like... <laughs> I look up and I see them like side eyeing each other, you know, the eyes just kind of glazing over, just looking at the board. It's such a disappointing feeling. Yeah, it, it is. And then they get, it gets and then I finish the teach and then it's just. Can we just get started? Yeah. How about how about we just do a couple rounds and I'll learn. I'll learn like that. That you know? sounds like someone I know. And it's like, no, you need you need to understand why you're making a choice. And I also. But hey, you. Big respect to my parents because they toughed it out. They played the entire thing. So I got to respect them for that. Big ups to mom and papa Dwayne. (laughs) (laughs) Um, You know, and on that same topic, how do you teach your games? Like what kind of, like what's your uh, method really? Do you teach, do you try and teach strategy at all? Or do you just, here's what you do on your turn structure. I teach, I teach my family the same way I would teach y'all a game, because um, I mean, your family's not stupid. They know what they, they can <laughs> gather information. <laughs> they can gather information. I would never. Do they call know what to stupid. do with that information? Probably not. But I think that is the. I think that is really the problem. It's 
It's they know that the this the, this does this when I'm supposed to do this, but why? Why am I doing this? Why, why would I do that instead of this? Yeah, I, I think that's where the main differences lie. I, for me, I always, I mean, the games I'm playing with my family are relatively simple, um, but it's usually I find it beneficial to give them, you know, a few options for for ways to to tackle the game. So like Splendor is a good example to be like, hey, you could, you know, try to get one of the nobles. Uh, so figure out what colors the nobles require. Maybe two nobles require similar colors. So maybe you should just go for those colors. Or an alternative way is like pick a level three card that has a lot of points that you want to work towards. Reserve that card early on and work towards towards that. Like, all right, cool. There you go. Those are two ways to gain a decent amount of points in the game. Pick one. You don't got to tell me which one. <laughs> just figure it out. I'm not going to play against you competitively to be like, oh, you're trying to do this. I'm going to do it. You I'm going to hate beat you. Yeah. Um, but Kev, what about when that person just doesn't get it? <laughs> and they go, why are you doing that? Why? Why do I want the gems? That's I think you just give and up. And then you have to, yeah. Do you know anything about that? My personal experience? <laughs> oh, you're talking about that story. <laughs> That was a teaching catastrophe. We're going to move on. <laughs> that's kind of all there that's is. A, there. That's a good story for another time, probably. So, now when we're talking about family stuff. Yeah. Holiday. <laughs> pure so joy. Positivity. That's for actually me, a good topic. When I'm teaching, write that down. I feel so bad if I'm going into a game that has high strategy and I don't teach people the strategy of like at least a simple strategy of the game and where to go and how to do it. Because I'll be like, I understand the game. I know what's going on. If you're sitting there and you're like, okay, well, I'll just do this. And it's going to grind my gears and I will need to make you change what you're doing if you're not doing the best possible thing for you. Oh, me and Kenzie. Are this is, there's two. a thing why Kenzie is so good at games is because she is playing everyone's <laughs> board state at all times and is optimizing each and every player's strategy to know what they might do to ruin her strategy. And then, but when you mess up and you do something that's suboptimal, she'll go, um, why did you do that though? Because I actually found a way that you would get more points. So I think there's something to be said for that. If it's depending on the person you're, that you're working with and, um, like you want them to enjoy the game, right? You want them to understand, walk away from the game with as good an understanding of the game as possible so that they may want to play it again. And their next playthrough will be more productive. So, like last night, we were playing "It's a Wonderful World," and you know, uh, you know, person sitting to my left never played the game before, you know, and just saying like, "All right, hey, like these are some things that you could do. Like these are the cards that you've drafted." I hadn't tell her, you know, tell them what to draft, but you know, this is what you got in front of you. You got to make decisions on which ones you're going to recycle and which ones you're going to try to construct. Hey, this is a way you might approach this. This is why you might do it this way. This is a different way to do it. You know, as opposed to just having them fumble through the game, do horrifically, and then potentially not enjoy it at all. You know, why not give them a little bit of, a little bit of help, you know? Like, you know, Maracaibo the other night when we were picking starting cards and I was like, do this, 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 and this, and this is why you should do this and do this. And, th and then he destroyed us just purely based on his starting cards. Here's the thing. Do you remember that I had to go back and change those? When I cards? am playing with uh, people... Based on my direction. When I am playing with people who I'm like, these people are probably only going to play this game once in their life, I teach them the game and then play with them solely so that I have uh, low-level AI to play against in a solo game so that I can just have a good time <laughs> playing my game They're and horrible. pretend that there's competition when in reality I'm likely going to win immensely and I'm going to enjoy every second of it while also having people to make jokes with and have conversation. See, I so, feel so bad if I win a game that I teach. Mm. So me, me, Kevin and me and Kevin and Kenzie are on two totally opposite sides of the spectrum. Cause it's going to sound like I'm being an asshole. I do not help people at all. Wow. 
Wow. Um, now, if they ask me, what should I be doing? Or what's the best way to do this? I'll tell, tell them. them the worst option. But in <laughs> no, I'll tell them what I think should be good. So you it, will that just be the pass worst, on your Would turn. that be the worst option? Probably. I don't know. Um, but if they're just playing their game, I won't stop them to change something that they do. Um, and Kevin knows this because I've told him this plenty of times. Um, but not dogging y'all like. That's do it, do it, because also like what you said, you don't want anybody walking away from it doing horrendously and not enjoying the game. However, I haven't yet met someone or played with someone that lost a game, and because of that, they didn't enjoy the game. But um, understanding is a piece of that too, right? So if you don't understand what you're doing. And like how things are supposed to chain together and work together in a game, like you can let them fumble through. Now, I think the other thing is it's personality driven too. I mean, for the most part, we're all playing games with people that we know to some extent. So, you know, person A, who you know is fiercely independent, is capable and will totally muff the punt on the game, screw everything up. Football do- reference for you two. <laughs> <laughs> Totally screw the muff game up. Muff the punt. Muff the yeah, punt. Punt the muff. It's different meaning that way. <laughs> uh, and you know that they'll still enjoy it, right? They'll still, it's a learning experience. And they're like, all right, cool. Like I did it poorly, but now I understand, you know, I saw by the end of the game, like how I can do this. And they'll think about it and maybe they'll want to play again. Like, you know, those people, right? Mm-hmm. Versus people you're like, mm, you know, I don't know. I don't know if that's true, right? If they'll if they're gonna be as comfortable with that or if they're just gonna be like, mm, you know. Like then, sorry. No, go ahead. Like last light, the other day, not yesterday, but the day before mm. was my first time playing it and also a couple of my friends' times playing it. Um I could tell you right now, one of those people I know for sure was not having a good time. Mm. Um but they told me last night when I took a picture of Last Light, they said, I really want to play that again, just not in the circumstances that we played it the first time. Um, and, like, that's what I mean. We're like, you could do terribly in a game, but that won't shake you away from the game. Like, I don't ever want to play this again. Um, and again, like, like, she, like they said... It could just be the circumstances that they played it in, the people that they're playing with, the number of people that they were playing. They really had to go to the bathroom the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're, again, like reeling this all the way back to the question about like family members and whatnot, it's a bit different too. Cause when you're talking about people who yeah. play board games all the time, you can approach them differently. Like, I, my parents, bless their hearts, have purchased several of the games that I've introduced them to just so they have them available. If I go visit them, um, my brother and that his... That is absolutely his, adorable. Mm. Uh-huh. That's why they, That's why my mom will text me. She's like, hey, Target has a buy two, get one free thing. And what games did we play? Um, and then my brother uh, and his kids, his kids are getting old enough that we, they can start playing games and stuff too. And they have some stuff in their collection that some things I bought for them, some things I bought on their own. Um, but they don't spend a lot of time playing board games, so they're not thinking about you know the strategy and the tactics of a game the way that people who play them a lot are so just giving them a couple tips and tricks azul hey you should try to make sure you clear your board between each and every one of these as best as As possible yeah because if you don't and you've got eight pieces stuck on the board you're gonna end up with a bunch of stuff in the broken tiles stuff like that you know like i'm not gonna tell you exactly what to do and what to take but or, you know, in open information games to say, hey, look, like you have four different options in front of you. If you did this, this could happen. 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 And with that knowledge, and they understand that and they see those things come into, you know, reality, then they begin to internalize it a lot more and a lot quicker rather than having to fumble through it and be like, I don't, I don't understand how I got here. Okay. 
That's poignant. Mm. I think it's mm. poignant, actually. But that's also so like going back to the original question about like what games do you play with you know family members over holidays and stuff. Um, for family members, also for people who are new to board gaming, for me, uh, I prefer open information games where there's no hidden information. Okay. They don't have to to read a card and try to understand it. And then by them showing me the card to ask for clarification, ruins, yeah. you know, I have information. Like again, it's like so Splendor, Azul are two of my go to games for that. Um, Cascadia is another one because there's nothing hidden. Yeah. There's nothing hidden whatsoever. And I can look at their board. I can pull a Ken's and be like, all right, cool. Like if I was you and I was on this board, this is probably what I would do and why. And again, it you know, I say that tongue in cheek, but like I think that's valuable because that's how I want people to understand the game as best as possible. Uh, when I know they're not, you know, See, it just pro gamers. Pisses me off if you don't take the best thing for you. I think. Sorry. I think that's a disorder. Well, <laughs> it happens. Disorder. Disorder. We can't do more than three seconds because then it's a copyright violation, apparently. Oh, really? It's something like that. It's like five seconds of a song and it's a copyright violation. You're wild. not allowed to sing a song on a podcast? Uh, apparently not. Pod, some of the podcasts I watch, they'll sing like two seconds and then stop and they're like, copyright. Anyway, would you take Calico home? Would you play Calico with Dude, family Calico members? Calico is deceptively <laughs> I, tough. I have played Calico with my parents and they did like it. It's a good game if you can grasp it, but it is deceptively not <clears throat> a like, oh, whatever little game. It's deceptively The pattern thing freaks people strategic. out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I've only played it the one time, so um, I don't know it well enough to uh, like teach it like on the drop of a cup. So at this point, no. Um, but as I introduce, like especially like my brother and his family, to to more games, I could see that being one probably in a year or so. And that's also a, a dynamic of the age of the kids. So like the oldest is. math good um 13 okay no 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 he's not a teenager yet i'm sorry that's maybe 10 yeah he's like 10 and then the next one is like eight and then the next one is like five is it weird that they're almost the same age as my brother a little bit <laughs> <clears throat> now that you mention it <laughs> yeah. kenzie is the oldest though so are you i am also the oldest yeah how old are your brothers not much further I, off. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. I barely remember your birthday. And that's, that's true. And that's by obligation. I mean. He doesn't <laughs> remember his children's birthday. I do. I just no. get that mixed up sometimes. Speaking of birthdays. Somebody just had one. Happy, happy birthday. <laughs> blood I on did. your clock tower. Yeah. I, I wish more blood on you. And Sebastian forgot it. I didn't forget that your birthday. Okay. I forgot. <laughs> I was gonna defend it, but now nah, I forgot. I'm sorry. <clears throat> That's hey, happy totally birthday, buddy. Fine. My birthday. I, don't think I hope you're even. I hope you your clock birthday. tower got extremely bloody that night. It was. It was bloody. It wasn't that night, was it? That was. It wasn't. Night. Yeah. It was like a couple days before. Yeah. No, I mean birthdays are hard though, because unless you this like this day and age. <laughs> If oh, birthdays are hard, huh? Yeah, they are, especially when you're this old and you can't remember shit like that. That one song by Jeremy. <laughs> I literally have to Jeremiah. Get girl, the fuck you out know of here. I, I, let it, I let it <coughs> put their names in my phone now, so their birthdays. In it, so I'm like, oh. that's cheating, though. Well, Facebook is the only other way. I guess your memory's fading too, huh? It is. In your advanced age, it is dementia, Jesus. early onset Alzheimer's. That's to be fair, I have the memory of a goldfish. So <laughs> three seconds. Yeah. yeah. Did you know that's a myth? Yeah. Moving on. Yeah, goldfish <laughs> can navigate like mazes and stuff yeah yeah um anyways last thing about the family thing your favorite your most are you going you're gonna go see family here right yeah tomorrow bit? morning okay so are we i don't know about you Dwayne. i live here you do live here <laughs> uh you're gonna do the family for yeah you can take some games all his games yeah. are literally in his i'm home. so yeah. excited his to take taco cheese cat pizza. Hey! taco cat go cheese pizza come on baby taco <laughs> cheese pizza I cannot wait to smack your I'm hands. I'm gonna take that I to will, my family. I'm I will gonna, not be playing that one. It's gonna give me an excuse to <laughs> hit my family members. 
because uh-huh. me and my dad's hands, that would be two frying pans slamming <laughs> down on my mother's <laughs> dainty little palms. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> um, no, I, I do want to take that one because I think it'll be fun. I am. I told my mom, I'm like, look, you're making me drive to the worst place on in Texas. I'm going to take a game and I'm going to force you to learn it with me. So Which one? I don't know yet. Because I'm trying to decide if I really want to, like, destroy her brain or if I, like, want her to have a decent time. What are, your, what are you thinking? It was like your- my, obviously, my first choice was Dominant Species because <laughs> oh I don't get God. to play it enough. So if I'm going to force some people to play a big old game, it may as well be one that I will like playing. I'm going yeah. to sit on the couch and laugh at you the whole time. Yeah, yeah because the they're going to be like, no, we're not doing this. Um, the no, they're gonna here. sit there and they're gonna try, and you're gonna be like, "You got to do this." And you it's just gonna this, be. It's just gonna this, be. They're just gonna be like. It's just okay. gonna be me frustrated that they didn't <laughs> understand this really big game. I don't know. Um, I think tapestry is just a lot of content. Honestly, wingspan wouldn't be bad. Shout out to the top five video. Yo, um, wingspan you can do. My my parents can play wingspan. Yeah. So well, we we had uh, uh, we had an experience. Uh, with one of our parents learning wingspan and then going, this is a stupid fucking game. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what are you supposed to do in this? I don't get my competitiveness from nowhere. Mm. And she did not do uh, good. Uh, they no. did not do good. Yeah, they, them, oh, okay. did not do good. Um, this is a stupid game. Who she was would, upset. Who would even spaghetti. like, who would like this kind of game? You must be some kind of idiot if you like this game. 30 million people worldwide. Oof. I was like... You can just, it's okay that you're bad at the, I was like, it's okay that you're not understanding. You can just admit that you don't understand. That's okay. You (laughs) don't have to like, that's a, that's a hard thing to do. You don't have to poop on a a lot of people's favorite game. Does she know that it's a lot of people's favorite game? At the time she knew it was, and at the time that was my number one. At the time they, them knew (laughs) that they were pooping directly onto my heart. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Um, Wingspan is great. I think that with just the base game, maybe that would be good. I think adding in all of the expansions. I guess it's just really different cards, huh? With Wingspan? Yeah. It's just new cards. Sure, there's yeah. like a mid-round mechanic, the other player thing mechanic, the pink one. Mm-hmm. But it's not crazy, you know? Yeah. This bird does this, and it has a timing, and that's it. I do get a chuckle whenever I do play wingspan with my parents. Because so, they always have to do a reteach like, every time. Because I don't expect them to, to retain that information. But uh, my dad is especially fun because you will teach everything and then you'll explain a rule. He's like, why can't I play this bird? Because you need to have you need eggs. <laughs> so he'll, he'll lay eggs instead of trying to play the bird. And then he'll figure it out. And then like two turns later, you're like, I'm going to play this bird. And you're like, no, you need eggs. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for trying though hey mr kevin thanks for trying mr kevin yeah mr that's always the mr. dad version of kevin. that's always the dad version of the person no. so you're kevin to me so your dad would be mr, mr. Kevin. kevin at least that's how my brain works mm, makes sense like mr and mrs Dwayne. that's what i did when i was a kid <laughs> i just learned people's last names What's our last name? Nope. Not on. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Doxing yourself. What the heck, lady? <clears throat> I don't know, actually. I'll text it to you. Did Zuckerberg. We talk, didn't we talk about this before? It's Zuckerberg. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Smith. Yes. You look like a Smith. Oh, sure. Totally. Totally. Mm-hmm. Totally. <laughs> yep. Sure. Totally. <laughs> For those who don't know, I am having myself a little fun drink. With your fun koozie. Yeah, so with each sip, I'm delving further You're into... You're feeling a little bit better about yeah. the day. Descending yeah. into chaos. It's 4 p.m. somewhere. Anyway. 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 Going to family is, is fun. And, you know, I give they them credit because <laughs> <laughs> they like to play games. <clears throat> Sometimes they get a little angry when they don't understand. And we know that it's because they don't understand. And that's that's okay. You're allowed to. And at least they always want to play. You know? Yeah. They're always willing. Mm. Willing participant. Yeah, that's true. 
It's just sometimes it's like I don't want to play. I don't want to play Azul nine times in a row, <laughs> you know. And I'll play it with you a couple times in a row, and then that's kind of it for me. Let me go play Rocket League, you know. Oh, I know. I know. This is more of a this is more of a one on one conversation. <laughs> We're looking We're at each other in the eye. We're gonna move on, guys. I hope that you enjoyed that family part of the conversation. That <laughs> getting to know the real us. Yeah. Now, but not your last names. How do you teach gamers? Mm. The I same know. way I teach my family. I do have a different approach. Uh, in Kevin's opinion, it's bad. But <laughs> hey, I try. <laughs> I'm not the only one who carries this opinion. <laughs> Right? Dwayne? No, I, I, I okay. So there was a time when I was trying to emulate, I was trying to emulate the beloved Rodney Smith, Rodney, and teach it in a way that. Wait, that's what you were doing? No, 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 no. No, <laughs> no listen. There was a time listen. when I was trying to do that, and I would literally, like, make mental notes. Literally? This is yeah. Literally. <laughs> I would make mental notes. This is how you're gonna teach it teach the object of the game how you win go into like turn structure right i don't know when that flew out the window <laughs> but all of a sudden i'm just like okay so on your turn you're gonna play a card but and then it's someone else's turn and on your next this. turn you can pass or you can double down on that card you'll flip the first card face down and I this don't know. thing on this board does this yeah yeah i do i and do need to rework game- how you connect tutorial. Things. You don't finish anything. You just go from oh, you do this, and then when you do that, you can do this, and then when you do this, you can do that. Yeah, you I teach all the connections. Section. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, I know a, that I'm trying to change it, but it's uh, it's kind of tough. It's hard. I mean, it really is hard. I will say though, having learned several games from you, <laughs> that not fully as, apparently. As long as you're patient and listen for the <laughs> entire time. <laughs> It will all come together. Oh, man. <laughs> and sometimes it's like the second to last turn of the game and I reveal <laughs> and I will reveal. Oh, also, this other thing is very, very important and you shouldn't have been neglecting it the entire game. And I'm sorry that I probably just beat you because that you were ignoring it the whole game because I didn't teach you. And then I just take over halfway through him teaching. That Kenzie will do that too, mm-hmm. um, and, uh, and and look, I'll be honest. Sometimes she interrupts me and will just kind of say the thing I just said again, and then skip a lot of other stuff. Mm. <laughs> I will tell you from personal experience, and I'm sure you can um, can uh, you know agree or disagree that uh, being a part of this marital dynamic <laughs> is. Hilarious. <laughs> Hilarious. Hilarious. Well, I'm going to set it up Wink. and then you're going to teach it. No. Okay. Well, but you're going to teach it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I've never said that before in my life. I, I say that every time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I go, are, are you, you sure you want to sure you you teach? Because <laughs> I think they want to win. <laughs> I, I think they're trying to learn the game. Oh. I will not let them lose. Mm. That's true. Ken, so Kenzie will teach them wrong on purpose so that she has an excuse <laughs> to be like, oh, actually, this is why I need to help you. Mm, I think there's a, what's that um, thing where you make somebody sick so you can take care of them? <gasps> there's a. It's, it's not, not Stockholm. No, Stockholm is when you. You, you just don't want to leave a bad your, situation. Your kidnapper. Yeah. Um, that's a very simplified version of that, my love. But. Yeah. Effective, I think. But yeah, there is a. Um, yeah, I don't remember what it's called where like you deliberately make somebody sick. Munchausen. Munchausen syndrome, yeah. Wait, that was that right? right? I think so. I think it is. That sounds Did right. you just pull that out of your ass, or is that like an actual thing? Hey, every day, baby. <laughs> okay, every day. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Google it. We, got, we have the power. <laughs> it's really funny. It's, gonna be, it's funny either way. If I'm right, I did pull that out of my ass. If I'm wrong, he just agreed with me for nothing. <laughs> You're just so convincing, baby. Oh, no. Munchausen's is different. Munch is a psychological condition where someone pretends to be ill or deliberately produces symptoms of it's illness the, in themselves. That's a different one. It's first person, not third person. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's POV, not... Or no. It's not POV. It's the other one. You should know. You, you watch all your spicy book content TikToks. POV. Your husband is watching you read a book. Yeah, that doesn't have anything to do with Munchausen syndrome. 
Oh, that actually might still be. Oh, fa- facetious disorder. Oh, my God. Previously called Munchausen syndrome by factitious. proxy. Factitious. Facetious. No, no, there it is. It's That's Munchausen factitious. syndrome by proxy. Oh, Jesus. Oh. Fuck. All right. Dude, hit me with three of them. No. <laughs> Woo. Highlight reel. Hey, no one thought they were going to be learning so much <laughs> about psychology. You came here for a board game podcast. <laughs> Hey, now it you're must be about hey Munchausen, Munchausen hey, by proxy, doctor by proxy. Oh I'm Jesus, right fuck, here, buddy. Man. Stop. Okay, if next, I could, if, please. If I, could, if I could give you a PhD, I would. Guys. Oh yeah. yeah. Enough. A pretty huge. Why well, no you don't more. like you don't like the fact that we're sucking each other up? You don't like this? You don't like the dynamic we're creating here? I just want to say something and I can't. It's mm. so inappropriate. Say it. No. I this literally said show. I literally said he can give me his PhD, <laughs> which is pretty huge. That did not <laughs> click in my head. <laughs> that did I not get there. That. that did not get there. Oh man. That's because I'm the receiver, baby. <laughs> Woo! I don't okay. ever know what you're gonna do with your hands. This is a family <laughs> show. That's what she <laughs> said. <laughs> so teaching board games. So the attempt at the old Rodney Smith. So how are you, Dwayne? I'm good. Yes. <laughs> yes. When I'm teaching gamers, I used to try the Rodney Smith. Now I kind of just spit whatever comes to my brain first, oh. you know, and expect people to get okay. it. It's absolute chaos. It, you get there, though. You get there. <laughs> Do you? He gets there. I've learned Always. how to play all the games that he's taught and even won some of them. So it can't be total. Yeah. I always get there. Garbage. Yeah. But. I'm about to buh. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> no, I. Rodney's methodology, of course, is is tried and true. Like it's a great way. Um, I wouldn't say I've never really thought about whether or not I emulate that or not, because I think I was teaching people how to play games before I discovered his page. But I just love the cadence of his speech. Mm-hmm. You know, and he's everything's everything's great about it. The production quality, and he's so happy. Yeah, uh, all and, the time. The, I mean, in a lot of ways, it seems like, I mean, he's just, he's probably just following the structure of the rule book for the most part. Um, but he just does a really good job. And yeah. Okay. So would you rather teach someone or put a video on? What do you mean? To teach someone a game. Would you teach someone or put a video on where there's a tutorial? Depends on how well I know the game. If it's, uh, if it's a game I feel confident in teaching, I'll teach it myself. Um, because I'm pretty confident in my teaching abilities. Um, but if it's a game that I am not prepared to teach as well as I want to, I'll go and I know that there's a good video. I'll go to the video because then I know pressure is taken off of me. So your options affected as well. Mm-hmm. If you have a watch it played, cool. Yeah, absolutely. Well, great example. Last Light. The game is so simple that nobody, not nobody, but like very few people have produced anything close to a quality video that's an actual teach. Every video that's out there for the most part is a full playthrough because everyone wants to know, can you play this 4X game in an hour? I'm like, I just want you to you teach cannot, me the way. game. <laughs> so um, I tried finding a video to prepare for yesterday and couldn't find one. So I was like, well, I guess I'm just going to read the book. <laughs> you know I, sometimes, and sometimes oh sorry go ahead i used to be the always oh video guy i never read the rule book headphone warning kenzie just shot you if you're a viewer <laughs> <laughs> i never read the rule book i open the box <laughs> take the rule book get that shit out of here he just starts putting pieces we wherever he wants for that how to play this game. Yeah. I've only recently started actually reading rule books. Um, what I do is I would re- I'll read the rule book and then I'll watch a playthrough video just to see it in action, see what's going on. Um, hence, probably why it's a meme right now that I f- fuck up rules. Did. Is it a meme or is it just the truth? A fact. It, it, it was the truth. Uh not not that much anymore. Hence? I used to. Forthwith. <laughs> I think it was uh, it was a meme because you had done it in an egregious way that was 
just very obvious and no one else had done it quite yet. But then when more of us had kind of done it, it was like, all right, well, we can't, this can't be a meme anymore because we're <laughs> as equal, equally guilty of this. But it's still funny because you it know, is. It's funny. It's funny. Um, but I just do it as far as if I'm going to teach something, I will say, this is who we are. This is how we win. This is how your turn goes. We're going to keep doing that until this end game thing happens. And then we score. Then all of the iconography and um, the where you get your points from comes after that. Because I don't know, in my opinion, I just feel like iconography is not going to make sense until you know how you're playing the game. I like to introduce the board and all of the physical components early on because they provide the visual context for what you're describing. Also, depending on an attention's uh, or a player's attention span, mm-hmm. as you're discussing things, if they're seeing that and don't understand that yet, they will gravitate towards their attention towards those things and then start asking questions about them as opposed to like listening to the rest. So if you get that out of the way, like, hey, these are your big ships. These are your medium ships. These are your small ships. This is what this planet does. This is the way this board works. That's why components are in the beginning of the book. What about yeah. when you have an assistant executive producer who may or may not be on their phone their entire time, <laughs> and then Throw when it's back. time to play the game, they go, what do I do now? Uh, what do I do on my turn? So this is actually, uh, I know this is a dig at a very individual. Well, actually, it's a dig at two people. Um, <laughs> we're both, dear. yeah, he's got his own person like that, and you guys have your own person oh. like that. Oh. Yeah. Um, Stop it. But you know what? you are. You know what? <laughs> to give something back to him, when he's not on his phone during the teach, it could it can be a little egregious at times, but he will ask questions out the ass. Yes. And you know what? I appreciate him for that. Mm-hmm. Because instead of kind of just like sitting back and if you're not really getting it, seeing what happens when the game starts, he will ask a question almost after every rule. Which is which, good and bad though, because sometimes you're like, I'm I'm gonna get there. Yeah. So he will ask a question where you're like, I'm gonna get there. But I I would I would rather have to say that other than reiterating the rule in the middle of the game because you weren't. That doesn't just, bother me. Ours just blank stares at us the whole time yeah. if he's not on his phone. Let's just play through a few turns. <laughs> I'll get those and when then we play. Let's set the game up, play through a few turns, and then reset it and do it again, and then I'll learn by then. I mean, so, it, so I mean, <laughs> sounds like you're not a big fan of that. Um, it's oh, no, in, we love it. I think, though, that... Again, this is about knowing the people you're playing with and meeting them in, you know, at least halfway. Um, And for a lot of players out there, I do think the idea of listening to somebody explain the rules without the context of watching the actions take place for 10, 20, 30 minutes doesn't do anything for them. Nothing sticks because they don't have any context to see it in action. And those players just need to see the game played. I will say, extra shout out to, I don't know if you guys watch him, John Gets Games. Mm -hmm. He, I think, is, for me, the best learn by watching people play the game, except he's doing it all by himself. Mm. And he'll play three, four players and have them do turns that are competitively, I think, like it's a good strategic turn to do. For example, I watched like the latest one I watched, Barcelona. And he was, I think, three players. And he went through on, okay, I'm first. For my first turn, I'm going to do this because I want to do this, this, and this. The next player, um, they decide they want to do this because they want to get ahead in this, whatever. The third player, a different action because they want to do this. Now back to me. I've seen what they've done. And maybe I want to kind of get ahead of what they want to do or... I want to just move on my own strategy and hope that they don't, you know, crash down on me. And who explained the differences in each move for each character. And that's the best watching people play the game to learn. So you agree. So he plays that himself in chess. You agree yes. that having somebody explain strategy and options is a good thing. Yes. 
it's a time thing. It it's it depends because I have a lot of time in the day. I will watch him for an hour play through five <laughs> turns of three different people and then be like, and then the rest of the game is just you go in circles until this happens. But is it okay if somebody was to do that for a new player while the game was being played <laughs> for their first time? <laughs> yes. First okay. time is always the hardest. <laughs> All right. I think you've just been validated. I know. I <laughs> never had any thought that I was wrong. Hey, are we the aquarium in Maryland? Because we do validate parking. <laughs> that was a really stupid joke. You shouldn't be giggling at that. I just <laughs> That's a very laughing? that's a very dumb joke. <laughs> I'm glad you know. <laughs> There's a parking garage for the National okay, Aquarium. Okay, you don't need to continue to explain it. <laughs> Where is it at? What's what? that area called? It doesn't matter. The Inner Harbor in Baltimore? The Inner Harbor, where they validate your parking. If you went to the aquarium, Baby. you don't have to park. parking. No more. That was what the joke it was, was referencing. Yeah, I know. Anyways, that was uh, teaching gamers, <laughs> you know? Do you guys have anything else you want to say on the topic? Do you hate teaching? Do you like teaching? I don't like teaching. I would rather teach than learn. 100%. Know. I'd rather read through the rule book and try to help understand it than someone try to teach me because I won't pay attention. Oh, mm. I guess my last thing, I will say, I go through moods where I'm going to look for a video and I'm going to watch whoever it was that uploaded a video that's how to play this game, even if it's in 320p or 360, <laughs> whatever it is. Um or sometimes I'm like, you know what? I kind of feel like just reading through on Mars, oh, seeing God. how far I can get, you know, not very far. Apparently <laughs> I've tried multiple times when I'm in that mood of like, I just want to read a rule book and go through it in my mind. That rule book is tough. You know what? <laughs> I actually just did that. Um, I just opened up diplomacy. <laughs> oh, my God. I brought everything and I opened the rule book and I got I goes. I got through it. I got to the middle of it. And then it ex it started explaining moving and how like shit happens and all all the different ways that something could happen. And I don't know if I was just in a, the wrong mindset, but I was just like fuck this. <laughs> I mean the how to play. <laughs> I was about to say like I it, did that with nucleum. That's uh <laughs> diplomacy is one that I think for the most part like there's only like a page or two of rules if you go on like some of the online forums and stuff. It, the biggest thing is just understanding how things resolve and like all the potential possibilities to be like, well, if this cuts this support and that cuts that support, then this unit is unsupported, but this one's still supported by that unit. And this unit was being convoyed by that unit. So that's, therefore... That's the part where I was right, like... Which okay. is why nobody fucking plays diplomacy on a board game. They just let the computer do it. And it's also because... Anytime I look up diplomacy, it's always it's not the new one that I that I have. It's sure. not the twenty twenty three one. It's the the one before. That. Everyone's given up on it, and I don't want to watch. I don't want to do that one because I don't know how if it's different or anything. Yeah. I don't know if if anything's changed. Yeah, I mean, lots of variants, lots of different modifications and stuff like that. Um, people who do manual diplomacy, kudos. We had a when I was. One of my, my first year teaching at uh, at West Point. The hey guys, if you didn't know, Kevin used to teach at West Point. <laughs> Board games specifically. Yeah. Be Navy. <laughs> um, the faculty, the junior faculty, we did um, uh, eighteen hundred global uh, diplomacy. I think there were like sixteen players, something like that. Jeez. And we did turns over. I think a week, a turn, like every week was a turn. And the orders, like Dennis, the guy who was doing the orders resolution. I the think menace? He, I think Dennis. He is a menace. Love him. Um, I knew it was coming. That's what she said. Yeah, like, I never, I never, I never, I think he was doing it the first year. Maybe that was Dave. Doesn't matter. Whoever was doing it, um, absolutely just exhausting just thinking about like resolving those orders because. Yeah, hard pass. Just, <laughs> just use the online platforms. They're free. <laughs> free ninety nine. 
It was a gift. Fair enough. <clears throat> like, Fair enough. Uh, my diplomacy it was, was a, a gift. gift. <laughs> so, you know what? Why not? Yeah, give it a shot. Why not? Have Why you guys not? played Pax Palmier? I have. Palmier. I want to play it, man. Do you know how to play it? No, I'm not, I can't teach it. Oh, dang. Did you like it? I watched a uh, how to play video like twice, but then the time in between each of them has been too long for me to try and play it. But I want to play it, man. And I want to play it. Those, it little, was, those little blocks look so beautiful. I want to play with them. I think I remember like, I was like, oh, okay, this game was cool, but if I never play it again, that's fine. Yeah. It was that's like one, it one of those things. It was also two player, so I don't know if that changes anything that much. I think that's um, you talk about like whether you like enjoy teaching. I enjoy teaching as long as I'm prepared. I hate the idea of teaching a game and not being ready to teach it. I love teaching under pressure. Mm -mm. No nope. oh, under pressure. Mm -hmm. My heart starts beating burr, 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 like burr, crazy fast. You know, I start to sweat a little bit. Is that the reason why things go like your <laughs> your like full Rodney script goes out the window? Cause God, yeah, I want to feel alive again. I want to feel the oh, did I just mess up? Adapt. I mean, up until recently, <laughs> boom, boom. meeting you guys and Enrique and people like that, I was the teacher. I was the game oh. guy. I brought the games. So I, I had to teach. I had to learn six games before we went to a game night. And I was like, God, man. And then God. we don't even play some of those games. And it's just mm -hmm. like, fuck, I know. And that's probably why. I fucked up so many rolls. And then you came here, and I was like, let's play this game, and this game, and this game, and this game, and this game. And yeah. I was like, That you yes. had no idea and what they were. Let's never play <laughs> any of your games. I'm so bad about that. I like my games. I'm a person that I like what I like, and I don't like to learn new ones. Hey, it's okay for him to feel that way, too, because I there have been several times, especially early on, where I'd come with a bag full of games, and I would spend an hour plus like refreshing the rules so that I knew that like even games I'd played before i'm like well i don't know these people very well like i want to be able to teach confidently so like and all right all right cool we're gonna like play this maybe and then nothing comes out of the bag and you're like all right you know we played a lot of other fun games still have fun <laughs> not a problem all right next week comes around and you're like all right cool like ah, i gotta refresh again because we didn't actually <laughs> get to play it so some of that you know and knowledge is is, is is dissipated so refresh the rules and then bring it back and nope nope and then, like three months later, you finally decide to play Power Plants, and it's one of your favorite games. I Weird. am. Wow, Weird. that's I am, salt thrown right there. I oh. am okay. Wow, making a bad first impression for, in my own opinion. Here's my thing. I don't know if you guys know this about me. I'm so worried about impressing strangers. It's weird. Secondly, I am okay making the worst first impression ever because if you still like me somehow after that, we're cool. You know. If you don't, hey, that's fine. Different different cookies for different pots. Also, by the way, one of the first times we played together, we played your game. It's true. Yeah, Brass Birmingham. No, I'm talking to you. <gasps> Steam up. Uh, Whoa! Mm -hmm. Steam up? You guys shouldn't be friends. That was the first that time. First? Yeah, well, that was the third time. It was the first time. Oh, we God. did not play it that night, that day when we got to the shop. Okay, let's, let's lovers quarrel. <laughs> I was yeah. gonna say that. <laughs> we played Zuvadas. You guys, we played Ra. Lovers to oh, enemies. Okay. I don't count that. That day we, we met. Dude, lovers to enemies. Was that was that was Croc and Rhino. Yeah, that was Croc. And that Rhino. is our origin story. Croc and Rhino. That is the first time. What did you play in Zuvadas? I was the rhinos. No, no. Oh. oh, I don't know what I was. I was drunk as hell, dude. <laughs> oh, that's true. I forgot. Did we didn't? Did we play Steam Up with just you, me, and, and they me? who shall not be named? Yeah, at uh, <laughs> Night Watch. Yeah, Night Watch. Did we? Mm -hmm. I thought because we played Title Blades. Wait, we played Steam Up and then I need Tidal to Blades. know oh, after. Okay, classified information. Okay, I know we played it the next time when uh, yeah. Matthew and Allie were there because I was like, "Hey, yo, just shout do, out Matthew and Allie." I was like. This you guys guy are cool. You told Sebastian dope. it wasn't at your house. What? When you drove to their house. <laughs> oh yeah, that was awkward. If I appeared in your ring camera, <laughs> I'm so sorry for how oh, weird that must have been. Oh, you didn't even say anything to them. No, he. Did. I don't have any contact with them. I messaged you guys yeah, to be like I went to the wrong house. He didn't say anything to them. He, he I didn't have their I contact them. information. Oh my god, they so, thought so you I was were just, such a creep. Yeah, exactly. They definitely have to have this mystery in their house oh where gosh. they're like, "Who the fuck is this?" No, you this? know what? The guy. Uh, so it's 
It's Matt Alley, and then they have a third the roommate. roommate. Okay. So <laughs> the, the third roommate texts Matt and Alley while we're there. Yo, there's a guy like, outside. He's like, some dude in a white shirt just came up to the door. I don't know who that is. And oh, then, my God. And then I'm just like, I have a knife. I'm like, Sebastian. Blood on the clock tower time. Ah, I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> Sebastian messages me and he's like, "Oh my fucking god, it's that black potion, isn't it?" And I was like, five yeah. messages ago, he told me we're at Black Potion playing the game." I, and I was like, "I'm on I my way." Knew it was a black. <laughs> I'm on my way, and I show up at Matt and Ali's house. <laughs> Ringing the doorbell, putting my face against their window like a freak, like this, going. <laughs> what's even better? Hey, Here's uh, Johnny. Oh what's the uh, what's the furthest your uh, longest you're willing to drive where you're like comfortable? Oh God, like, what, how, dude, long, how long is that? If I have that? to drive more than ten minutes, it has to be because I am excited to go where I'm going. I want to go to this place and do the thing I'm gonna do. So how long did it take? Matt and Ali's house noise? is like 30, 35 minutes away. And I was so excited to go play this game. I was like, oh, I'm going to play the game. The oh, worst hour man. and 20 minutes of driving oh. to somewhere and immediately back to my house <laughs> for nothing. <laughs> for nothing. Because the crazy part is Black Potion from Matt and Ali's house is like another 30 minutes. Yes, it's a damn yeah. triangle. <laughs> so... I, and and you know what? I got to their house, found, found that out, was so upset. And I was like, you know what? It's fine. I'm already out. I'm sure that they're only like, I'm, I'm pretty sure they're only like 10 minutes away from here. I'm just going to go to Black Potion. I'll be late. Whatever. I missed the first game, the first half of the first game anyway. <laughs> Whatever. I'll just join in late. I Google it. 35 minutes. <laughs> How far is Black Potion from here? Like 25. 35. No. It's, it's like 25, right it's 25, like, 30 it's in like, traffic. It's like 25 minutes. Yeah. yeah 25, 30 I've in traffic. Been. And that's why Sebastian never plays Clock Tower again. <laughs> <laughs> I think we call that trauma. Matt and Ali, you guys are very cool people. I, am, I have so much PTSD from driving <laughs> over there. <laughs> that was, that was a you funny. just solved I felt, the greatest mystery. You, it, you, if you were there and you saw everybody's face when I broke the news to them, oh man, it was. It was, it was so like funny. it was like he was like Sebastian was in a car accident. <laughs> well, especially because everybody know ever for the most part everybody that was there like had heard that you don't like driving long distances. It was Cause crazy because princess because everybody's in the middle of talking like because we're playing the game and I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> and I'm just like, Dwayne, so uh, as the GM is like, <laughs> pause. <laughs> News from Sebastian. <laughs> I am at your house. He's not going to make it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh, dude. Mm. I'm still traumatized from that. That was a funny memory. Not for me. No, no. <laughs> I called Kenzie and I was like. Beep. Censored because I don't want to say it on the pod. <laughs> I put on some screamo music and I was just in my feelings because I had to drive a long time <laughs> for no for and here's the thing i'll drive a long time for a good time right fine whatever it's will worth you it. mm. I, it's worth will it you know mm. it's worth it i literally got no return from that drive <laughs> zero return here it is it's right here it's this it's this it's the story this yeah. trauma at least we get some story. some extra yeah. minutes out of it uh-huh yeah. <laughs> gosh you know it's funny about the uh Talking about the the first time we played and teaching rules when we played uh, brass, and oh you started, no. I so you started <laughs> teaching, and I was like, "This is fucking chaos. This is a complicated game." We had I hadn't played in so long, which is why I went to Black Potion. I was like, "I need to play this game. <laughs> it's been too long." And, and I'm like, "This is a this is a difficult game to understand because it's so different than so many other games." And uh, I, in hindsight, I did feel bad, so you know, for that. But I did definitely hijack the teach from you. I don't even care. Honestly, yeah. I was so grateful. <laughs> the only thing that I was like, your what? spidey intestines tickled. So did mine when you were like the network thing. And I was mm -hmm. like, I don't. Yeah. But <laughs> well, that was really why I felt bad about it after the fact. Was like, well, I not only hijacked the teach, but I fucked it up. So I was like, well, um, 
Yeah. You obviously, here's the thing. We've had experience before. I'm going to talk about it a little bit. But you obviously know the game, right? Sure, you, there was a discrepancy in the rules. Fine, we fixed it. There's a difference with that and someone having played the game before. You played it a little bit wrong before, I, but you had played it before. There was a different discrepancy in <coughs> someone saying, My get so oh, big. I've never played this game before. I just watched five minutes of a video and then going. <laughs> We're going to move on. <laughs> this is a family show and it's very positive and I love playing games with people of all kinds. I think the moral oh of the stories God. is that board game space has so many different, like anything else in the world, it's got a lot of different personalities out there and and trying to, some people, you just gotta. Some people. That's why you Some find your where? people. You find your people, and then and then you, you never go you back never to your public gaming space never, again. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> I've got my people. I don't need any more. Right. That's it. We're oh, done. Oh, Kev, are we your people? Is that my gift? Are you telling me that we're your people? I mean, some of the people in my room are my people. <laughs> yeah, like Shadow, Kidding. Winnie. I love you guys, Dwayne. I will cry. I know. I'm trying to get you to cry. It's, uh, last time I talked, I almost got you with acrylic tiles. Ugh. I was just mad. Well, that, that was would more, have been, a, that been, a, been a sad cry. That would have been an angry cry. Yeah. cry. This is a I feel left out cry. Yeah. You hate me. We love you. <laughs> I mean, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't know how to play any of the games properly. <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> just... As uh, you know, as properly as we think we're playing them, <laughs> you know, you, <clears throat> but I don't know. I think that's uh, you know, I think that's a pretty good place to call it, right? We've had a lot of fun, a lot of laughs at someone's expense. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it's one of us. Sometimes it's someone who will never hear this. They them, but that's okay. Are they them? Yeah, we're banking no, on a lot of people them. not watching. This <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Ever. And hey, you know what? If they have the uh, awareness to realize it's them, maybe they'll reflect on that. Doubt it. And then send us an angry text message. No, it'll be a call. And then I won't answer. And then I'll have to text them after. <sighs> no. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Uh, we love you. Just kidding. This is not a parasocial relationship. <laughs> Keep watching the podcast as a viewer and only a viewer. Go ahead and hit like and subscribe if you did like this video. If you want to watch and listen to book porn, go ahead and go to the Spicy Book Nook podcast. We need to plug us in there. Yeah. We had a lot of little smutty comments on this one, so it was pretty good. Yeah. If you're into strongman competitions and um, picking really thing, heavy things up off the ground and then putting them back up down, them down. <laughs> follow Dwayne's account. It's going to be linked down below in the description. I'm pointing down because it is the description is down there. Mm. Um, and then if you... Uh, are really smart and like talking about culture and, and traveling. Doctor. Go ahead and follow Kevin. Doctor. And old. Old oh, people stuff. Too. Oh, yeah. If you are a grandparent and have. <laughs> 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 you want to talk about dialysis machines? Yeah. <laughs> Retirement plans, all that stuff. Oh, I think you you're know. the same age as my parents. Hair regrowth products. Yeah. Hymns. Hey, Rogaine, Hymns. Yeah. Hit us up. Oh, no. All, all 28 of our viewers <laughs> probably buy your product. Thanks for watching, you guys. This has been our holiday episode. I hope it's been every bit as cheerful as you hoped it would be. And good night. I've been Sebastian. Oh, I'm Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> you got to keep going. I'm, I'm Dwayne. Dweezy. That's me. And I'm Ken's. And thanks for watching. <gasps> Bye, everybody. Bye. Ooh. Happy holidays. Me, me, me. Me, me, me. Me, me, me. We gotta work, uh, we gotta work uh, on our uh, outros. Uh, uh, uh.